How are we doing folks? It's Mario from MF Lighting. If you are new to the channel, thank you very much for joining me for the first time. Hopefully you enjoy this video and you want to subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much for your continued support. So, um, in the vice today, I've got something that's a little bit more traditional. Um, but the reason why I'm tying it is if you follow Ross Murdoch or um, the Hair Law Fishery on Facebook, you'll see that he's just recently posted... The last couple of days, this very fly, um, and it's a soldier palmer. And I thought it was really interesting because if you're into your trout fishing on any of the commercial waters, you'll know that these are old but should not be forgotten flies. And it's this fly in particular that is doing the damage on hair loss. So traditionally, it's a, a, a fly that you would fish um, for brown trout on the lochs. But when I was growing up, and I was just learning how to fish. Um, we didn't have blobs and boobies and fabs and dialbacks, etc. It was all the traditional stuff that we we fished. So um, Silver Invictus, Bloody Butchers, um, Cape McLarens, etc. Soldier Palmers. And we fished them for the rainbows as well. So, there's, so they're tried and tested. They do work. But um, it's really interesting that the fish on hair law this year have been kind of tuned into the soldier palmer so it does make you think should I maybe be fishing some of the traditional stuff a little bit more often so if you are out give these flies a go so go ahead and we'll tie it so the size 10 um barbless hook that we've got in the vise and for the tail this is just a piece of red wool they would use for for knitting so you might need to Rage your granny's knitting uh, materials for this one. So we'll get that tied in. And again, you can make the tail on this as, as long as you please. Just try and brush it out a little bit. It's a wee bit of Velcro. And then I'll just come back up and our second material that we're using on this fly is this stuff here and this is a gold oval from uni french so this is a an old material that's been sat in my box for a long time you'll find that the guys that tie the traditionals will use this quite often and this is going to be a rib if you don't have it a gold wire We'll do the same job so we'll get that out of the way and then we're going to come in with some red dubbing and stuff here you can get that in loads of different shades this is a wee bit darker than the tail i think it looks a bit better in the body now there's loads of variations of this of this fly there's it's been developed over the years different blends of dubbing have been used I'm going to try and keep it as close to the original as possible um, but I don't I dare say that this is probably a wee bit darker than the original that was used so we've got our dubbing in and then we're going to come in with a cock cackle and I'm just using an old Indian cock. So we'll get that. I'll fold up. Because it's a more of a kind of traditional fly, you'll find that the hackles on them tend to be a wee bit longer. So I'll do a couple of turns at the top and then open turns. Oops. Open turns on the way down. These hackle pliers had a wee bit of rubber and them just to 
pulled the hackle. But unfortunately, when you've got kids, you see me think it's funny, or maybe they don't think it's funny. Maybe they just don't don't know. My wee girl is taking off the wee rubber part that helps just to hold hold the uh, the hackles a bit tighter. She's just young, so we'll not give her any trouble. So we've got the first hackle in place. Just remove our waist at the back. At this point, I want to just pull some of that dubbing out, if you wish. And then I'm going to come in here with hen hackle and this is just going to get tied in up at the top this is a bit softer you don't need to do this part the fly will fish the way that it is but I like to tie it in with a hen hackle at the front no idea if that's the original way of doing it but it's the way that I'm doing it today. It's the way that it fishes well. I've fished this for the brownies. Um, and this is how we would tie it. So, try and stroke those fibres back. And again, it's entirely up to yourself how many, how many wraps that you want at the front of this. Now I'd fish this on my top dropper, so I'd want to fish it on the bob, which don't know what that is. Is um, what you'll find is the guys over in Ireland and on the big wild lochs they'll fish longer rods, and the reason for that is that when when they're stripping the flies. They want to bring the flies up towards the boat and be able to dabble or bob the flies at distance. And as this fly comes up through the waves, you want to just drag it across the top of the water and sometimes that's enough just to entice a trout that might be sitting in behind it just to come up and, and take the fly. So just that extra hen hackle in the front just adds a little bit more presence to the fly. And that will just help when you're bringing it up, just to create a little bit more disturbance on the surface. And you'll get a wee wake off of it. So that's how I would tie my soldier palmer. As I said, whether it's the traditional tying or not, it doesn't really matter. It's my version of it. It's how, how I would tie it for fishing for the brownies. But that fly there is doing really, really well on halo at the moment so give it a go guys if you've got one in your box and you're not catching there's no reason why you can't stick on some traditionals and uh, see how you go on if you're out this weekend tight lines thank you very much for following me if you haven't already followed please hit the subscribe now button and i look forward to catching you in the water tight lines take care